Hi folks, co-tutor here and my name is Anil Deshpande. We basically started our conversation with job intent service and then we moved on to the job scheduler and the job service. And in both of these cases, overall idea was whatever service that you had started, it would get killed if the application gets killed. But however, it can be restarted or it can be configured in a such a way that it can get restarted and rescheduled for the future point in time to make sure that it always gets executed. But the question is, what if we don't want the service to get killed at all? Is there a way to achieve this? Well, the answer is foreground service. And that is what the whole focus of this particular video will be. So let's look at what documentation says about the foreground service. If you look at it, it says that foreground service performs operations that are noticeable to the user. The most important keyword here is noticeable. How do you make a service noticeable to the user that is executing in the background? Well, the answer is you basically show a notification so that the user is aware that something is going on in the background. To implement a foreground service, you get started by adding this particular permission to your manifest file that is Android permission foreground service. It is not a runtime permission. You have to just declare it in the manifest file and automatically the app will grant this particular permission to the application. And then when you declare your service in the manifest file, you may choose to define what kind of foreground service your service is. These are the possible options. You can write data sync, connected device, location, media playback, media projection, phone call. I have seen that even if you don't provide this and you still run a service as a foreground service, it still works perfectly fine. But this is the recommendation from the documentation. So let's stick to that. And if you are not doing anything complicated related to media or location, you can simply put a data sync that works most of the times. And then when you start a service, then you inside that you have to call start foreground. The first one is an integer value, which is an ID. And the second one is notification object that you want to trigger when this particular service starts. And all of this, you have to do it in the service. The remaining part is how do you start the service? For that, you can use context compact dot start foreground service method in which you basically pass the context and the intent that you might have created with the service class. And this you will be doing it in the activity or any place where you will be starting your foreground service. So with this basic understanding, let's get into a demo. So we are going to go back to the same application where we were doing the simple task of logging random number in the background. Now only the difference is I have created this class called as my application notification manager. Uh, if you have gone through my notification series, this should be completely familiar with you. It basically helps you to manage the notifications in your application with the notification channel and the appropriate messages. And I am basically exposing it through the application. So whenever I need a notification, I just get it using the my apps notification manager in the application. So we will see how to use this in our application in a moment. So let me go back to my service. And here uh, I am using intent service, nothing fancy, the same intent service which used to log the random number. Here I have to trigger a notification when this service starts. So since it is a intent service, I have to do it in the on handle intent. So I can write start foreground. First one is the ID and second is the notification. So I have written a private method here called as get notification, which basically fetches a notification object from the notification manager. So it is my application, get my application notification manager, get notification. And I just pass some arguments. You can go through the code, but I will not be going it through now because the main focus here is the foreground services. 
So I get that particular notification and pass it to the start foreground service. So that will trigger the notification. And if you go to the manifest file, I have declared the permission that is foreground service. And I have declared the service with the foreground service type as data sync. You can choose any other options as well. But in this case, I am just logging a random number, which could be a data sync. So that is why I have used that option and if you go to the main activity i cannot use the old start service for that i have to use context compact dot start foreground service and pass the context and the second parameter is the service intent which i think i have already initialized here another thing that i want you to pay attention is this context compact is part of the Android X package. So you have to make sure that you have migrated your application to an Android X package. And if you see the code of start foreground service, what it basically does is it checks for the version of the device and then calls the appropriate method of handling the service or starting the foreground service so if you see that if it is a pre oreo it just starts a service or if it is a post oreo it starts with start foreground service so you don't have to worry it is already taken care by the context compact start foreground service so i think we are pretty much done with our coding so let's run this so now pay attention to what's happening in the locket let me start the service and as you can see, a notification came here on the top to indicate a background service is running because that is the notification that I have triggered. And even if I kill the application, you can see that the random numbers are still getting logged and you can still see the notification that is background service running. And it will keep on running. That particular service will never get killed. It will not get killed at all. And since it is a foreground service, it will always be represented or noticeable to the user through this notification. And when I click on that particular notification, I basically open the application's UI. And here, if I really want to, I can stop the service, which will stop the service. And when I stop that service, the notification automatically goes away. I don't have to do that. It is basically handled by the platform. And I can once again start the service. It will once again trigger the notification. And even if I kill the app, you can still see that the logs are coming. So this is one way of making sure that your service never gets killed. It is always running. It looks very tempting to use this, but be very, very careful if you want to do it. Use this if you are absolutely sure that you need this kind of behavior. Otherwise, most of the times a normal job intent service or a job service with a job scheduler would be more than sufficient. This will drain your battery and user if he comes to know that this particular application is draining the battery is continuously running in the mobile in the background, he may even uninstall the application. So use this mechanism very, very sparingly and only if it is absolutely necessary. So with this, I have completed foreground services. But we are not yet done with services. Android has introduced something called as work manager, which makes our life a little bit more easy when it comes to handling or scheduling services in the background in a much more controlled way or in a much more user friendly way or developer friendly way. So we will be exploring that in the few upcoming videos. So stay tuned. That brings us to the end of this particular video. Don't forget to like, comment, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Take care. Bye.